So the Rugby World Cup final is confirmed. The Springboks taking on the All Blacks. Now, these two sides met just before the Rugby World Cup did take place, and it was a record-winning margin for the Springboks. The question mark is how many of those players are going to be taking part in this final. And in this video, we're going to try our best to predict what the coaches are going to be going with. It is myself. It is Rugby Itch, mate. You've got the bot kit on. You want to be nervous throughout those final moments of that English game, which, of course, has just taken place from when we are recording this one. Yeah, I was um, extremely nervous. I was on the... <laughs> my heart was racing just throughout the whole game. But um, yeah, the box did um, secure the victory at the very, very end. It's just one of those games where I think the box, in my opinion, didn't deserve the win. But their experience and mentality alone allowed them to kind of come back into the game and yeah, get that win over the line. So um, I was very impressed by that. I am really uh, nervous, but also just, I can't believe we're at this stage now. We're going to see a Bok All Black final because you know, this is the first time we're going to see this since what, 1995. So going off what we just saw, they can make a lot of changes or <laughs> knowing the box, they can just stick to what they're, the team they've gone with. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. And of course, tactically, this game going to be very different from what yes. we saw between yeah. Springboks and England. A lot of kicks taking place, so I wonder whether or not we have changed some things to try and counter that, perhaps, for our Bok lineup here. But we will start with the front row. Who have you gone with as the one, two, and three? Yeah, so in terms of my front row, I haven't made any changes here. Um, I've gone with Kitsov, Bongi Minami, and Fatsuma Herba there. I just think these three alone have... They've, they've done enough for me to stay in the starting lineup. Um, I will say I probably... And I said this in our in our um, podcast as well that I think Oxen Che was actually the most impactful player coming off the bench. Actually, and I know a lot of people may get onto me for that because Hodger Pollard, you know, you know, he did win the game obviously for the for the box, but just that little switch for him for Kits off, and then obviously having Vincent Cock coming on later on, I just think really swing the momentum for the box and allowed them to kind of win a lot more of the penalties for the scrum. So. He definitely was in my mind actually to start this game, um, Oxen Che, but um, but no, I, I've gone with the front three that we've seen from that semi final. Alrighty, I've done the exact same. Steven Kitsoff, Bong Yumanambi, Franz Malharaba. I feel like they've got a very good foundation at the moment for the spring box. And of course, yeah. you don't really want to be mixing it up too much when going head to head with Ethan Groot and Tyrell Lomax, the All Blacks. They are trying to find that consistency. In that scrum as well. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty awesome matchup. Bongyo Manumbi started a bit rough in the game up against England with his yep. line out throws, but did come back very well, was expected to play the 80 minutes, and more than likely will be expected to do just that as well. But now we move on to the locking duo. Now, number four, I have gone with Eben Etzebeth, and number five, Franco Moster. I don't think the last game was a perfect one to base it off for what Eben Etzebeth was able to do. I'm remembering yeah. what happened in that game up against France when it's a physical game with a lot of breakdown work. That is when Etzebeth does seem to be at his best. In the English game, he had to do a lot of watching back and forth for where the ball was going from those kicks. But I think he's going to enjoy playing the ABs. He always has going up against more than likely Big Brody Retallick. And the number five, Jersey Moster, I thought was a standout in that game up against England. There weren't too many players who had a huge impact in that starting lineup when it came to that four pack, but Mostert was one making 18 tackles, which was 10 more than any other Springbok player. Getting the line out steals, I always praise him for that. And it's gonna be something that the Springboks, definitely if they can get a couple turnovers up against the All Blacks, could give them a lot of momentum hitting throughout the game. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. I think like that locking, you know, kind of duel will be really fascinating to see, you know, really if they go, I think what's what's the expected, I'd say, for the All Blacks? It's probably what, Retallick and Barrett, you would probably say, is probably the two you'd probably say. Again, Whitelock could be in a conversation for sure, but um, yeah, going against the likes of Ed Smith and Mostert, who I've also selected here. Yeah, it's going to be really, that, that could really decide the game, you know, in terms of the lineup steals, because We've seen what I think is it more. I think it's really Retallick, right? Is it Retallick or Barrett who wins more of the lineup steals for the for the All Blacks? Just normally Retallick. It is Retallick, Moster. right? Yeah. yeah. So I mean that battle between Retallick and Moster, because yeah, it's gonna be interesting. He kind of wins uh, wins that battle, but um, but yeah, like you said, those two have just been in great form uh, for this World Cup, and um, yeah, I mean that early change with that Smith was definitely a surprising one for for most Bok fans, but um, hey, you know it paid off obviously with um, RJ Stamming. Coming off the bench, um, and yeah, just got that try. So um, yeah, well, 
We'll see if the box gets some incident in this one, but um, I don't expect it. I think Etzbev should play a lot more minutes um, in this final. Righty, so now we move on to the loose forward trio. Now, this is somewhere that we could see a couple changes, yeah. or maybe just the one, perhaps, for yourself. Have you made the bold calls of switching it up? Yeah, so I, mean, I think the bold call we're talking about is definitely the number eight spot. So I'll save you the suspense where I've gone with Khaleesi, definitely number six. Peterson the toy number seven. You have to go with them too. Um, but yeah, I've decided to stick with Dwayne Vermillion at the number eight spot. Um, I feel maybe this is a wrong way to say it, but the reason why I've gone with Vermillion ahead of Jasper Visa, and I know Jasper Visa has probably been the better eight, I'd say, for the box in this tournament. Um, I don't think that's a, you know, kind of an outrageous thing to say, but I, the, the thing that kind of co comes back to mind for me really is that performance looking back at the rugby championship actually where the box went down to um i think it was auckland if i'm not mistaken um in the rugby championship and i think jasper visa did start that game and he didn't have the best of performances actually looking back at that and as soon as dwayne vermillion came off the bench he was just unbelievable so it's one of those where i think against the all blacks you, you want experience you you really need experience going into these games um in particular and i think Dwayne Vermeulen just gives you that. Um, I mean, when he retires, he's going to be seen as one of the best eights ever to uh, play the game. So it's it's one of those where um, you got to go for him in this one. It, you know, it's going to be his final match as well. So I just think it's it just feels right to go with him at the number eight spot. But um, but I assume have you gone with a change here? Like what what have you gone with here? Well, number six, I'm sticking, of course, with Sia Khaleesi. Number seven, I did decide to keep Peter Steftatoy there. I believe that is what the selectors will be going with. Whereas number eight. I did actually make that change Whoa, of a yes okay. visa. Okay. I believe the coaches may look at that last game and actually that game up against the All Blacks that you mentioned and that impact that Dwayne Vermeulen was able to have off the bench and they might think that's exactly what we want later on in the game. That's normally when the All Blacks start to get stronger throughout that last 20 or so minutes. So if you can shut them down with that experience of Dwayne Vermeulen alongside RG Snayman as well, of course, going to be a great key player off the mm. bench for the box. I think that that could be where Dwayne Vermeulen can be used the most dangerous throughout this game. Although he did start in that game up against the All Blacks for the Rugby World Cup warm-up game when they were able to get themselves a record margin win. So he's going to be somewhere yeah. though. I think that's one thing we've got confirmed. Unless there's an injury, Vermeulen has to either start or come off the bench in this contest. He's just too much of a valuable player not to have for this rugby World Cup final, but now that takes us on to the 19 combo, and boy, is this an interesting one to talk uh, about. We've got to address the elephant in the room. They picked the two attacking halfback and fly half for that game up against England, then decided that they'll play a fully kicking game, which pretty much yeah. I would have thought would have been the perfect game for Fuff de Klerk and Andre Pollard if they were going to be yeah. going tactically with that style. Now, in that warm up game, we saw Fuff de Klerk and Money Libok up against the All Blacks, and it was actually a very good combination, Libok having a blinder of a contest there. For this game though, I honestly feel like the selectors will go back to the experience and go with Faf de Klerk number 9, Andre Pollard number 10. It worries me how quickly they got rid of Marnie Libok from that last game, and I mean he didn't really get the ball a lot. Unfortunately, any time he had it, I think he touched it three times and he had to kick it every single time because that was the tactic that the box we're going with, but if you're not going to use Reinach or Lebok for their attacking prowess, there's no point them being in the starting lineup. And I know that sounds harsh, but if you're going to go for that kicking battle, you're better off having the two who are very good in that department, yeah. and that is the clerk. And Andre Pollard, that's not saying that I wouldn't like to see, though, that impact off the bench of the two youngsters. Well, I say youngsters, Reinach's actually a lot older than I <laughs> hey, thought he was. Everyone always crazy. tells me, <laughs> I call him the youngster. I think it's just because he hasn't got a huge amount of experience for the box. So I always consider I him as one of those new pups in the pound. But yeah, I would say Faf de Klerk, Pollard, the combo that I think they might go with in this matchup. Yeah, look, um, gosh, I mean, this is definitely the toughest decision, I think, um, in this lineup. Um, there's no doubt about that. And yeah, like you said, I mean, the box definitely went with a more attacking 9 and 10 for that game against England. But I do also think I want, you have to credit England in the way that they played the game because they are the one that I think implemented that kicking battle. It wasn't actually the box who implemented it. It was the English. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, they just, they were the better team at the, at the end of the day. And 
uh, particularly in that first half alone. That's where they really controlled most of the momentum. But um, yeah, and with that, of course, you know, the blocks weren't able to do much. And that's what also really hurt uh, Lebok and um, Kobus Ranek and not just having the ball in their hands and just at the times just kind of being so pressured that you have to kick the ball. So it's it's one of those like where, yeah, it definitely didn't go in their favor in that sense. And but yeah, like you said, going back towards that game um, in Twickenham where they did go over a combination of Fafa Kirk and Lebok. Um, that is the combination I have gone with for this one. And it, it's a bold call. Um, it's a very bold call. Um, to go with, um, I, know, I understand. Um, I think Fafa Kirk is definitely, I think that out of the two, in my opinion, he's the one I actually think is needed more um, in the nine spot. Um, definitely when you're going against Reinach, um, I think he's the one who just adds a bit more calmness i know he's not really as soon as a calm player but just he's more of like a player who he he, he gives you presence at least in, in your team and he's he's someone where he's in there done it um in that final so i just think he's a player you want to have in that situation but that 10 spot it, look it's a, it's a tricky decision because libok has definitely been the better well i mean he's you know he's been the 10 really for the box for the triple World cup so he's definitely been the better 10 <laughs> when comparing uh against pollard but of course when pollard's obviously joined uh, the side uh, going back into that what was like the last game against Tonga um yeah he's definitely picked up in pace you know he's he's shown that he can make an impact off the bench and it's one of those where yeah just I I said this in our in our podcast I think Limbok just had a bad game he, everyone has a bad game in their career and I think it's just one of those where he just he just wasn't able to um not just do anything with really with the ball in that in that situation and I think this game will be slightly different because, you know, you have, to think about, you have to also think about the opposition as well. You know, when you're going against the English, they're going to go for that high kicking battle in terms of everything. But against the All Blacks, I, they're going to play more of a progressive, progressive rugby. They're going to, they're going to go, they're going to attack you. But with that, of course, there'll be openings. So that's what allows a player like Libok to take advantage of. And I think he can take advantage of it better than Pollard. So that's the reason why I've gone with Libok in this situation. But I understand, of course, when it comes to finals and, you know, you're going for kicks, you know, Pollard is definitely the better, um, you know, op better option to have. And he just gives you more of more confidence, really, at the end of the day. He gives you more confidence um, in, in, in terms of kicking. So I understand. Yeah, look, I mean, let me know in the comments what you guys think, because I, I understand, obviously, the, the decision to go with Pollard ahead of Libok. I, I actually don't disagree with that at all, guys. I just think it's it's one of those where I always have a thing where you want you want to back your guy. You want to back the guy you've gone with. And in this situation, when you have a bad game, it's probably the best opportunity to do it. But um, but yeah, look, it's a World Cup final. So it's definitely something that can. I, I would not be surprised at all if uh, Pollard is selected there. But um, yeah, again, um, in terms of my my sense of combination uh, for this side, um, I've I've gone with the uh, the two, the expected two. I've gone with Damien Delande and Jesse Krill. Um, I, I was considering, and I'm saying considering, uh, mm. to maybe put like Kanye on the table for this uh, game, but it's one of those where, yeah, just, you know, he hasn't had any minutes in this World Cup, and it's one of those where, I guess, if he was to be included, I think you would have expected him to have a few minutes under his belt before kind of thinking about him in this game. And, yeah, just, but again, you know, Kanye Wam, you can just, you can change a game just like that, so... Yeah, it's a tough decision, but um, again, Jesse Krill just wasn't able to make the impact as has he's he's made in previous games. That's kind of the reason why I was thinking of it. But um, but no, Dimon Delande, uh, another good game I'd say for him. Kind of probably one of the only players who kind of gained a few meters for the box in this game and helping him in that in that process. But, uh, but yeah, that's a combination I've gone with in terms of the two centers. Well, I've gone with the exact same two, Damian Delande at number twelve. Like you mentioned, he didn't really get too many opportunities in that game up against England, but when he did, he just showed how strong he can be because in a game where both sides a majority of the time were retreating going backwards Dialindi was still one of those players who was able to go forwards number 13 mm -hmm. Jesse Creel I honestly feel like I mean the fact that we didn't see him touch the ball other than one knock on throughout the game and that probably wasn't the best one to judge him off mainly because he wouldn't have been expecting a pass seeing as he hadn't got one throughout yeah, the rest yeah. of the game but yeah, Jesse Creel with the pace that he's got, I think him versus Rico Iwani is pretty awesome. That's if that's going to be the combo that they do go with. And then, of course, you've got Dialindi and Barrett on the inside as the other two to look out for. I have to say, I feel a bit bad for Andre Estesen and Kanan Moody. I honestly feel if South Africa did end up losing that game to England, that would be the midfield combo they had for the third-place playoff game up against Argentina. But now that they've made their way through to the final, I feel like they'll still have those two main guys in mind. Yeah, I understand. Moody at 13 could be something 
that they slightly consider. But I think if you're going to consider Moody at 13, they'd also have another man who you've mentioned already, look on your arm lined up maybe yeah. for that return. But it's a tricky one. The box are stacked with talent in the back line, and I feel like it's not yeah. exactly a bad thing to have unless you're trying to select only 23 players to take on a side in a Rugby World Cup final. But now we move on to the back three. And I've gone unchanged from what we saw in the game up against England. Cheslin Colby, he is going to be my number 11. I would love to see him touch the ball a little bit more in this contest <laughs> up against New Zealand. And I honestly feel he will be able to. The most dangerous we saw Cheslin Colby was when we got a cross kick glimmer of hope for the Springboks yeah. on attack. And it was so close it to working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But Cheslin Colby, brilliant player. And he stood up in that game up against France. I think he'll stand up in this game. Here we go. And he did with Will Jordan. If that is the way that the draw sits, so yeah, you what? That's a bit of an excitement one as well. There's a lot of dream matches that can happen between the box and the ABs, and even though we've already seen some of them take place, there's still that extra level of anticipation because it is the first time that we're going to see these players go head to head in a World Cup final. Number fourteen, Kutli Aransa. Now I have to say, up against the English kicking game, he did seem to struggle a little bit in yeah. terms of being put under pressure just out from his own goal line. But still, when he had the ball in his hands, he did look strong. So that is why I'm sticking with him. And number 14, I'll be honest, out of the back three, I see him as the most likely to get subbed out. If the Springboks did want to make a change there, maybe Kane Moody does go out okay. onto the right wing. Okay. Or perhaps Colby out that way. Someone else, well, they haven't really got too many. Else I was say, 11 is not really an option only, there. Because Pimpy is out. broken first. face, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I feel like... <laughs> That's probably the little change. Oh, do you see Creel number 14? Yeah, it, it, it's possible. And then maybe that allows Kanye. You never know. Well, but uh, but no, I, I think in that situation, Moody would probably be the player you put in and then you obviously put Cheslin in. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. But what about your 15 spot? Number 15, I've stuck with Damien Valimza. Going with okay. the experience there, which might be a little bit of a risk, seeing as I did go with Pollard at 10. Maybe they'd think about Vili Leroux as the combo with him. But I think Damien Belimza, he's still been strong enough throughout this Rugby World Cup to deserve to start this World Cup final. It's just whether or not the Springboks are going to go with the most capped players in each position for this World Cup final, saying yeah. they've got the seniority over some of these young guys. But yeah, I think while Belimza is... Doing very well. You got to give him another chance. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I mean, yeah, similar to you. I've obviously gone with uh, Cheslin Kobe in the number eleven jersey. Just you got to. I mean, he's just again, like you said, he didn't have as many touches as, as you would expect. Um, you know, going off the previous game he had against the French, you know, he was kind of all over the place. But uh, but yeah, no, he's definitely the number eleven for this uh, this final. This that's hands down. Craig Lorenzo, of course, um, is my fourteen option here. And again, these two could switch over. I mean, it's entirely possible. We've seen that many times. Um, it happens for actually throughout the game. Um, so it's not really um, even if they play, they're, they're assigned to play the position. They actually can switch um, in that sense. But, uh, but yeah, number fifteen. However, I've actually gone with Lillerue here. I've actually gone with the experience, and I think it's just it, it's a rugby World Cup final. It's one of those where, like, I, I know I went with a, like, against it in that ten position against Pollard. But I think in this position, I think at 15, you need experience. And I think Will LaRue has that, obviously, with a Rupert World Cup, obviously, already, and playing in the final, of course. You know, he just, I think he's a player I would I would trust in more in that in that position for the 15. But at the same time, Williams, uh, like, in all honesty, I think if there's a player, um, uh, we've had this conversation before in terms of, like, you know, thing in the future in terms of awards and, you know, kind of who's been a standout player for each team. I, Williamson, I definitely say is up there for the box. I think in terms of like the top three, um, in terms of what he's, what he's done throughout this tournament. So, um, yeah, it is tough to, for me to actually not include him in the starting, uh, 15, but I just think really LaRue, he just gives you a bit more calmness at the back. And that's exactly what we saw against the English as well. So, I'm thinking he can do the exact same thing. And again, you know, that we have that pivot, which um, we saw in the rugby championship as well with Livock and Will LaRue, which worked out pretty good. So that's a kind of another reason why um, I favor it. But, um, but look, at the end of the day, it's kind of similar towards that um, Livock and Pollard one, where if it goes the other way, I'm, there's no, there's not any complaint from me because I think both set of players are just fantastic and can definitely make an impact on the game. So, um, but yeah, 
That is my, my back free for the box. Spoiled for choice, I think is the best yeah. way of describing it. Exactly. For the exactly. spring box. A lot of players who can definitely step up in this contest, have a real impact. It's going to be exciting. And of course, the benches. That was somewhere that we saw the spring box very strong in the game of the rugby championship. Like you mentioned, Dwayne Vermeulen making his way off the bench in that game, mm. having that real impact. That last game up against England, I felt that the bench were what won them the game. Because of yeah. the performances of RG Snayman, of course, scoring the one try throughout the contest. Andre Pollard, when he made his way on, was solid. Fuff the clerk as well, doing what he needed to to help them get over the line. And, of course, Oxnashe and Dion Fauré in that front row doing nicely as well. So I'll ask you the question first of all, Tim. 6-2 split, 5-3. What are we dealing with for this final? Yeah. I mean, again, it's a tough choice, but... Um... I've gone with, I mean, look, I would not be surprised if even the box went with a 7-1 because we did see that in the Twickenham game. So that's kind of creeped in my head now. But uh, but no, I've gone with what I've gone with here. I've gone with a 5 free split um, for this final. Um, again, it feels weird me saying that because we've seen the box go with a 6-2 very, very often throughout this year. So for them to kind of revert back towards a 5 free in the knockout stages was maybe the plan going forward anyway. So um, yeah, maybe I'm going to stick with it and go with a 5 free. But, um, yeah, in terms of, I guess, the replacements off the bench, um, in terms of that front row, I've obviously gone with Dion Fauré here. I've gone with uh, Oxen Che and Vincent Koch. Um, so, um, yeah, just a good a good basis there. And, um, yeah, really just um, – I was really impressed by all of them. All of them made an impact in that game. Um, great impact overall. That's really all I can say. Just they, they were all great. And, yeah, again, I'm really hoping that um, these three players alone can make that same impact going into this final. So, um yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, for myself, I have also selected that same front row, Dion Fauré, my number 16, although I'm actually selecting him a little bit similar to what we've seen for the spring box, and that is as a loose forward with the option of playing hooker if needed. I'm expecting Umbanambi okay. to play 80 minutes here up against really? the Olex, okay. and the reason okay. for that is because I have also gone with the 5-3, but I want that little bit more loose forward oh, okay. cover, so that is okay. why I got Dion okay. Fauré. As the number 16, number 17, Oxnashe, and number 18, Vincent Koch. Oxnashe is going to be playing every single game in this Rugby World Cup if he is yeah. selected, which is a massive achievement because he's the only Springbok to be able to do just that. And I guess that just shows the fact that whether he's coming off the bench or starting, he's just going to put in a shift, keep on trying as hard as he can for the box. And in that front row with the scrums late in the contest, it could be a right handful for the ABs. Now, we've only got two more forward replacements. For myself, number 19, RG Snayman. I feel like he's pretty well secured in that jersey, unless, yeah, of course, yeah. they do try and switch it and put him into the starting lineup. I don't know whether now's the time to do it, though. So I believe he will be off the bench yeah. once more here. And then number 20, this is my problem. And the reason <laughs> this is my problem is because I've talked so much over the last few weeks. How can you not have Kwaka Smith anywhere in a side? And I have not got Kwaka Smith anywhere in my side instead Dwayne Vermeulen uh, as my number 20 now I was so close to going with the 6-2 for the <laughs> sake of having the player available being Kwaka Smith maybe getting rid of one of my backs but I couldn't get rid of Vili LaRue because I feel like that is a player that they definitely will want to play so yeah I've gone with Dwayne Vermeulen it's probably my biggest regret of my starting lineup and yeah. reserves not the fact that it's Dwayne Vermeulen but the fact that I don't have a space for someone who's been such yeah. an impact player throughout this Rugby World Cup. Yeah, I I, I don't think it's, I, you know, it, I think it's very clear that he has been the the impact player. I, I know, think yeah, the more you he talk about it, the worse I'm going to feel. I can't think of another player who's been that influential off the bench <laughs> than Clark and Smith. So, I mean, for that That's alone, true. I definitely had it. And the thing is, he can, he can cover eight as well. So it's not like he can't, he's been playing, he's played that position anyway. So... You can, you can take care of the job there, of course. And, yeah, you know, I've also gone with RJ Steinman as well. But, um, but yeah, Quokka Smith, man. Like, he's just – he's just <laughs> – I get it. Smith, he's, he's, my, he's my favorite loose four. So, like, it's one of those, like, where I uh, – you've got to include – I put him, I should have actually put him in my starting lineup, actually. The that would have been a good idea. Him, but, I should have done that. But, uh, but no, no, he, he you know, he's known for making an impact. So, that's where you've got to put him in um, off the bench. But, um, but yeah, no, nah, it's, it's Quokka. <laughs> it is, yeah. A very good player. I feel like I could have put him as a back replacement, similar to the last time these two sides played. He actually came in and as that number 24 to that last-minute injury. Yes, so yeah. 
you know, maybe he's my back. Re- well, I got four back replacements. Yeah, exactly. Off the four, four. That's a bit <laughs> overstacked, isn't it? But if any side was going to do it in terms no, of tactically, point. have to be the Springboks, of course, always leading the curve in terms of the new tactics. Just look at the current marking for a scrum. Of course, something that we haven't seen too yeah. much in the past. But now three back replacements, Tim. Should have only been two for myself, but we've got three. Who have you got as your three replacements here? Well, I think it's pretty standard. I think we're only going to have, what, one change in here, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, yeah, I've gone with Kobus Reinach as number, um, for the number 29 spot. Um, um, yeah, just yeah, he's, he's definitely the number nine um, coming off the bench. I just think he he's a player who can also influence the game off the bench. We've seen that in the past. And, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of the other scrum outs. I mean, we, there is Grant Williams. Um, but, again, he's played more on the wing, I'd say, when he's had minutes. I just think Kobus Reinach just... Yeah, yeah, he, he's he's gonna add a flair, and I think we didn't see that much in that game against England, and I think against the All Blacks when it comes towards those final minutes, um, you're gonna you're gonna need a bit of that uh, to kind of um kind of open up the spaces and create a few uh kind of uh, breaks in their defense. So um yeah, he's definitely a player I have off the bench. Then yeah, I've got Mahondra Pod here, of course, um, as the number twenty two option. You you have to include him. You know, he's been very impactful off the bench, probably the. Oh, do he, no, there's Oxen Che. So I, I'd probably say the third best player off the bench, I'd say, because I'd probably say Quagga Smith, then Oxen Che, yeah, right. then <laughs> Andre Pollard. But um, yeah, just 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 telling you once more, Quagga Smith is, is, is incredible. But uh, <laughs> but then yeah, Andre Pollard there, of course. And then yeah, well, um, you know, it is uh, Jimmy Williams, sir, um, as my final option. So um, yeah, again, you ought to include him. He's been great throughout this tournament. So it doesn't feel. Yeah, you know, just you, you you have to include him. He he just been great. So um it's Dan Williams. What, what, what more can I say? So for myself, Kobus Reinach is my number twenty one. I feel like he is definitely that next half back option, although if I had gone with Grant Williams, I could have had the six two split, which would have yeah. given me Quaka Smith, of course. Number twenty two, Money Libok. Now, I was very close to not including him in this lineup, only because I feel like there's a chance that the Springbok selectors may go, because he wasn't able to perform last week, we're not going to risk him in this contest. Instead, we're going to go with Pollard for the full 80 and just really cement that 10 jersey. But I think Marnie Libok with his attacking threat has to be somewhere in this side. A little bit similar to Andre Pollard. It's very lucky they don't have a third 10 who yeah. plays extremely well, or else we'd be in that scenario of he's got to be there, he's got to be there, he's got to be there. And then you get yourself in all kinds of bother. But number 23, Vili LaRue. He has to be there, I believe, in terms of the selector's mind. So, yeah, I think they'll go with him either in the starting lineup or off the bench. See, for you, you've got Damian Valimza as their man off the bench. So do you see yeah. that as fly half cover, perhaps? Could you ditch um, Le- Oh, no, you've got Lebok in your yeah, starting well, lineup, and then you can't get rid of Pollard. Got to have those yeah. threes, don't you? So, to, to be fair, like, like the, the more I think about it, like you, you could have Pollard there. I mean, obviously, I still have Pollard off the bench, but I could. Th- this is where maybe, maybe I'm not saying it would happen, but if you were to introduce him, you could have Lacanio Arm as the number twenty three option, I and mean. then make the impact. But it's a tough call. If they even put. I mean, if they even include him in the side, I, I'll be very surprised. But at the same time, very excited. So we'll we'll, we'll see what happens on that front. But uh, but yeah, no, Williamson is my my twenty three option. Quite a few changes across our starting lineups and reserves, of course. Now, we should mention this is what we believe the selectors will be doing, which is why we will probably be very wrong. It's hard to get into the mind of Rassi Erasmus. <laughs> Just look at the tactics for the England game. But nonetheless, we do thank you all very much for tuning into this video. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and let us know who you would think that the Springboks are going with in their starting lineups and reserves. Be sure to check out Rugby Itch as well as the Rugby Recap, both links will be in the description down below. Thank you all very much for tuning in, and we will see you all for the next one. Quacker Smith, Tim. Quacker Smith! It's Quacker Smith! What the f-